We wanted to dig a little deeper into why 5G is causing such an issue at Payne Field and at other regional airports across the country. Joining us live this morning, Todd Curtis, the CEO of airsafe.com. Todd, thanks for being with us. Uh, good to see you again. Uh, why weren't regional airports part of the conversation when it came to this 5G rollout? This comes as kind of a surprise. Well, it's kind of a surprise because this has been a long simmering issue. Uh, even in the days of 3G, almost a decade ago, there were concerns by the aviation community that this could affect uh, some airports and some aircraft. Without going into the great details about the technical side of this, 5G produces signals that could interfere with some key, a key aircraft system. Uh, radio altimeters, also called radar altimeters. And that system is tied into other things in the aircraft that are absolutely essential for landing in low visibility. Mm -hmm. Right, and all of this comes as we are dealing with days of fog being an issue uh, at Payne Field here at home. So what? tell us about what goes into the FAA's decision to grant clearance for some aircraft and not others. Well, basically it comes down to this. There are very specific requirements for low visibility landings. And one of those requirements is that you have to have a very reliable altitude above the ground. And while some altimeters can do so without uh, relying on bouncing signals off the ground. When you get close to the ground, a particular kind of altimeter becomes very prominent. Some of those models can actually operate in 5G uh, environment. Others can't. Uh, those aircraft that have those altimeters that can be relied upon and that the FAA has shown can be relied upon can land. Other aircraft don't have those. They can't right. land, especially some of the smaller regional airlines, such as those flown by Horizon. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like uh, Angelie was just mentioning, the Embraer aircraft, for example, mm -hmm. out of pain, uh, don't uh, have the equipment for this. So how long do you expect delays or cancellations like these to last for airports like Painfield? It's unclear because there are several things working at the same time. One are the telecommunications companies, uh, Verizon and AT&T, which right now have put some limits on 5G around some airports. Those limits may be reduced in the future. Also, it's a question of the aircraft being upgraded with these altimeters and the FA proving that these altimeters can safely work. So we could see fewer delays or rather fewer restrictions on aircraft in the future, or we could see more restrictions. In the meantime, though, it sounds like any flights out of Payne Field specifically mm -hmm. might continue to be impacted should fog be an issue because of this. That's correct. And it goes beyond that because an airline may not even schedule a flight into an airport where there is a possibility of this happening because this isn't a safety issue in the sense of the aircraft might not be able to land uh, safely. It just means they'll have to land at an airport distant from their destination. Yeah, and uh, that's especially bad news for a place like Payne Field where they have one carrier, Alaska yeah. Airlines, with planes that can't fly in these conditions. So, all right, Todd Curtis, CEO of airsafe.com. We always appreciate your insight. Thanks, Todd. Thanks for having me.